Genesis chapter 6 it says and God saw that that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually look at that if you will there was not a set of time where he had a decent thought from Genesis chapter 1 to Genesis chapter 6 everything that God had created and left in the hand of man has become totally debilitated generate it oh god can you imagine that every thought every imagination of the thought of his heart was only evil now now let's just break that down every only continually can, can, can you go with that with me every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil sometimes no continually did I have some evil thoughts continually no I had only evil thoughts continually did I have some imagination of the heart evil uh, no every imagination was only evil continually and if that has continued till now no wonder you scared of strangers no wonder you got five locks on your door no wonder you don't want to go down the street by yourself because if the generation curse has come this bad I need somebody to show up because you didn't prevent it please intervene and turn this mess around I feel the Holy Ghost I feel it uh, Noah saved his family by his faith and blessed by dad's faith is the whole family but notice something if you will they said Ham wouldn't cover his father's nakedness but rather laughed when you have a family where the man is significant then the children should always cover their father I feel like preaching here there's a breakdown when dad is not covered because if dad is the substratum of that household then if anybody ought to be kept out of jail it ought to be dad if anybody ought to be kept out of the scandal it ought to be dad because if dad is the substratum of your life then you have to take your life to cover him because if he is covering you then you ought to cover him because he is your meal ticket if I lose my father in my formative years then I lose the opportunity of greatness because the quickest way to greatness is to train up a child in the way he shall go and when he is old he will not depart from it I got to cover my dad you can talk about my dad all you want to but you will not talk to me about him I got to cover my dad I got to cover an imaginary dad I got to cover a dad who hasn't even been here I got to cover my dad I'm not going to expose him I'm not going to show his nakedness I feel the Holy Ghost here it happens because generation curse intensified even under the children of the law and that's why in Ezekiel it says the fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge what happens up there comes down and here's what he's saying edges from the root assembling without purpose can you imagine that edge because I wasn't raised in the right environment I don't have the energy to become something because I wasn't raised with the right stimulation now my father has eaten sour grapes and I'm feeling the pain because I'm formed in his image and in his likeness and what goes wrong in the upper room goes wrong in the lower room and I am 
in a situation because of his homosexuality, his insensitivity, because of his abuses, because of how he treated my mother, because of how he treated us. I have now become a slave to his weakness. That's why generally when you have an abusive father, you have abusive children who become abusive parents and they abuse their children and they abuse their children and they abuse their children until abuse becomes the generation curse that operates in that family. When you got a lazy father, you got lazy children who turn out to have lazy children who father lazy children who turn out to have more lazy children and now you got a generation curse of lazy children uh, but I need somebody to help us here I need God to intervene somebody step in here because we're going fast downhill uh, I feel the power of God and because of this what God said is I've got to change the picture here because when these children came in they were unique in the universe and that's what makes man so unique because there's a self consciousness in man that supersedes the animals because animals are instinctive but men and women can be trained can I take it a little further if you understand this of all animals professor William Hawking says he says of all animals and I quote it is in man whom heredity counts the least and the conscious building forces count the most God intended to build us before Adam aborted it by taking the fruit when God was visiting him in the cool of the evening he was going to build him into a warrior he was going to train him into a principled godly man but Eve was deceived and Adam took the fruit didn't even fight I wish he had a fought if you look at the scripture just a sentence and she gave Adam and he did eat come on Adam show a little spoke man at least she conversed with the devil until he got her uh, you just just succumb just and just went to eating on that apple God help us in here I hope that ain't going give somebody a high five and say is that still going on now no yeah 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 oh Lord have mercy on us then it's a critical piece here because God came to visit his mind in the cool of the evening in order to bring him to that place where the building forces counted the most if you notice in man our infancy is the longest our instincts are least fixed our brain is the most unfinished at birth the powers to break habits and to make habits are the most pronounced animals can't break habits they're too instinctive and the reason God set us up like this is because he knew Adam would have fallen and because he didn't prevent he had to intervene but he needed a mind that can deal with intervention I feel like preaching here he can't intervene for the angels because the angels are already fixed but he can intervene for you and me because we have the power to change our past and make our future bright I feel something happening I feel like lifting him up can I just preach a little bit here our susceptibility to social impressions is the keenest it seems to me that nature as a prescriptive power has structured man for her own displacement in other words nature the way you were formed is so fixed that God says I'm gonna form man so that nurture can take over nature I'm gonna fix it so it doesn't matter whose loins you have come out if you decide you want to be something even though you were born as a nothing
perfect. God says nurture can overcome nature and you can become anything you choose to be. I feel the Holy Ghost here. That's why Jesus says and shows us through the scriptures that all of the creatures, nature has finished them. But he's saying I'm leaving it up to you to finish yourself. If you follow the principles I give you, you can become whatever I want you to be. And you don't have to be poor because you were born poor. You don't have to be weak because you were born weak. You don't have to be abusive because you were born in an abusive home. Because I've got the power to intercede. I've got the power to break the curse. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Give somebody high five for the fourth time and say, neighbor, the curse is off. The curse is off. They can say what they want about my family. It don't belong to me. I can be whatever God has ordained for me to be. Can I preach a little bit? It is the law that perpetuates the curse because it didn't have a power to break it. And the law says the soul that sinneth shall surely die. I am so much like my father. Adam left me a slave to the rudimentary first principles of mankind that the soul that sinneth it shall surely die. And between being alive and death Job said man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. But I heard God declare prophetically ye shall not have the occasion anymore to speak this proverb that fathers ate sour grapes and the children's teeth are an edge. God said I'm going to change that. I'm going to intervene on behalf of the children. And that's why he says when the fullness of time had come I feel the Holy Ghost here. What it's talking about is the objective genesis when the fullness that belonged to the time. Give somebody high five for the fifth time and says God has some timing for your life. It's all about timing because time receives the action of the noun of action. The time here is chronos. It is not kairos because it's the succession of moments. That means God counted the moment that he was going to send deliverance in your life. That God knew how you started and he knew what he didn't prevent. He didn't stop you from the abuse. He didn't stop you from the tears. He didn't stop you from the neglect. He didn't stop them from walking out on you. He didn't stop your father from leaving or your mother from leaving at an early age. And the devil thought he's got you messed up. But Jesus was born under the law and he died under the penalty. He lived under the law and died under the penalty of the law which he broke. So he paid the penalty all the way back to Adam and he delivers us from any claim that weakness can have over our life. Then his resurrection